Good evening, viewers. How are you? Hope you've had a good Sunday. You've, you ate and you slept, perhaps, and you up oh, now, bright eyed, brush your tail. <laughs> and I hope you can share with us this program this evening. This is the Church of Nazarene Baptist District Family Forum. Back in your house, back in your sharing, I should say, your space again. And uh, again, we, I said last week, we started on um, this two part series on prey. Last week, we talked about prey and the Christian witness, how it impacts our family life. And today, we want to pray specifically for some concerns. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can see on the table before me, I have some uh, container. Uh, we have some issues, family related issues. Prayer points. Prayer points. There. Mm -hmm. prayer points. Mm -hmm. uh, we purposely, uh, well, we know we cannot pray for all of them, but so we will take uh, um, at random and we'll pray as God leads us. We'll have a little chat um, on each one and then we'll pray. Mm -hmm. um, so let's pray as we begin today's program Father we thank you for this facility again where we can share and uh, as we enter the homes of our people and as we zero in on areas of significance within the family life we pray you'll speak into our hearts and Lord may we speak only when, only what you require us to speak and be silent where you are silent. So that homes and families will be blessed and encouraged as we build a better Barbados. This is our prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be back with you in a moment. Mm -hmm. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you. Yes, um, as I said to you, this is a second program in the two-part series on prey and the family specifically. And uh, today we want to be praying for some, for some family concerns. Just want to reflect on a passage from the Bible though. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. And I'm using the NIV. I read, I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and uh, your mother Eunice. Mm -hmm. And I'm persuaded no one lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift, the gift of God which is in you. Fan into flame the gift of God. Mm -hmm. um, Second Timothy chapter 1 verses 5 and 6a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it doesn't mean that <laughs> that faith is is transferred down in terms of of through a, some sort of natural process. Mm -hmm. What it means is that Timothy had a, a context or a or, or developed a culture of spirituality from from Lois and Eunice, which then mm -hmm. impacted on him, and yes. he made a choice, yes. you know, to continue the faith. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I want to I want to emphasize that point because yes. Yes. we are about first and second generation Christians, and we mm -hmm. sometimes get the sense that because the grandmother and were, were Christians, then you're Christian as well to too, anything. right? But that's not the case here. Yeah, right? has to do with personal per commitment. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, so, I suppose that if you're trying to say that when you the environment. The environment, the context. context. Yes, the context. Yes. You know, um, um, very, very powerful. We know mm -hmm. that the environment mm -hmm. um, is a, a significant factor and feature yeah. in uh, mm -hmm. how persons are shaped. Yes. And if there's that, that environment, that, that culture of spirituality, of faith, of love for God, 
of the worship to Christ, mm -hmm. then it has the potential to impact our children in a, powerful in a very, very powerful way. Even yes. if initially it does not appear that way. Yes. Um, the person may appear to have strayed, but those initial truths yes. have been embedded in their lives. But that's, that's, that's what, that's what. And the come to the surface eventually. So it's a prophecy, you know, three yes. generations ago. Yeah. When they're old, they will not depart from it. You know, yeah. it is not, it is not um, an A then B. Mm -hmm. But what it is really is that the, the, there's a great possibility yes. that once you treat a child in, in the right way, yeah. eventually it will manifest. It's like um, sowing seeds. Yes. You, you sow those good seeds. Yes. And in time, they yes. germinate yes. and they bear fruit. Very, very important, yes. So, yes. Um, viewers and parents over there and guardians, the question is, what kind of environment mm -hmm. are you providing? Family environment for your children, for your charges. It's mm -hmm. so critical. Mm -hmm. And do not take it lightly. Sometimes, you know, I mean, we have environments where there, there is swearing consistently, um, there's no regard for the children no wrong. Mm -hmm. um, behavior is not very commodious. Yes. And um, it continues for a while. Yes. Can you imagine a child being exposed to this for a number of years? Yes. It's felt to work out these yes. um, bad habits. You know, I, I, I intervened in a, a situation like that a few years ago at a party. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was, um, I was driving by and heard this. This elderly man really, really good at her child. I mean, mm -hmm. with some awful language. Yes. So I cautioned him. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, he turned the fear onto me. Yes. You know, and I said, that's okay, I can take it. Mm -hmm. But this little child can't take it, you it's know. Not um, so not it's, not, it's not fair. Yes. Uh, but thanks be to God, though, that even though that may be the context, mm -hmm. you know, um, God can bring can bring real Intervention. change in that in that individual's life. They, they, they're not they're not they're not sentenced to a lifetime. Yes. Yes. You know, of those negative mm -hmm. emotions and behaviors. Yeah. They can break free yes. by the power of yes. Almighty God. Yes. And that's where the church comes in as well. Yes. Church and family, um, extended family, and even the school. Yes. Of course, of course, when we were young, the school became mm -hmm. a place where we prayed. Set yes, prayed, right. And, Maybe every Wednesday we went to church. church you know, Good Friday, Good Friday and, and, and uh, you know, I, Monday, I, I, Thursday. I remember that. I, can, as, I, can, I mean, although I'm um, in my 60s, yes. I remember those times. Yes. And the children were uh, a little time for work, for mm -hmm. school work, yes. But it's still time. Mm -hmm. You remember the priest as you shared and the story. Yeah. Beginning of length, you know. Yes. And, and even though we don't, we don't practice those. Um, mm -hmm. Seasons within yes. some of our evangelical churches. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like a good discipline, yes, though. Yes. You know, to remember those important. Yeah, uh, because yes. even as you grow older, you remember what they meant. Yes. You know, if you understand them mm -hmm. as you grow older. Yes. All right. But as I said, today we are going to zero in on some issues that we have placed there um, before us. And then we're going to see how many of them we can. Respond to Reverend Kelman. Mm -hmm. Just share and then. Well, I have one here. Um, <laughs> uh, it kind of starts at the beginning. Interesting. Okay. Uh, it says newly married couples who are making the adjustment. Yes. Right. Um, the first the adjective was what? Newly, newly, newly okay. married couples. Okay. Newly okay. married couples. Right, newly. Okay. Good. Who are making newly the right. yeah, yeah. Who are making the adjustment, and okay. that can be a very yeah. steep adjustment as well, especially mm -hmm. if you know you're. I live together for the for the for the very first day as the Christian yes. Yes. Um, you know Monday is. Yes. Then you know making that adjustment can be some mm -hmm. challenges. So I want to pray um, for for those couples. I would want to say to you though that it's important to understand that there's difference. Um, and difference is not necessarily means it's bad. Mm -hmm. Just that he may do he may do, do things one way. And uh, you do things a different way because your families of origin are different. Yes. And therefore there must be an of tolerance. Yes. And a willingness to work through and talk through issues. And of yes. course it's a different situation in the sense that you were both single. Yes. Maybe living apart. But now you've come together. Right. That's a big change. Right. I, I keep the third people third persons out yeah. of the relationship mm -hmm. though. Um, if you if you need a third party, find someone who's objective. Yeah. You know, um, it, very, very important because you may bring someone in, mm -hmm. uh, a third party who may be a parent or so we may have uh, their own personal agendas mm -hmm. and you have problems in terms of your relationship. Yes. Yeah, so so let's pray. Go let's ahead. Pray. Pray Mighty God, we give you thanks today for the gift of, of love and for the institution of marriage. We pray, Father, for those who have been 
recently married and who are making the adjustment of living together. I pray, Almighty God, for wisdom. I pray, Father, for compassion. I pray, God, you will grant to them a sense of understanding of each other and the differences that may present themselves in this union. I pray, Almighty God, you will grant to them that sense of persistence and perseverance that their love, Lord, will last for their entire lifetime. Gracious God, they come against conflicts that would uh, threaten the, 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 the integrity of their relationship. And I pray, God, even if they, if they need someone at this time that will uh, navigate with them this very difficult journey, I pray, Father, that they'll find an objective third party. Bless and prosper them, Lord. Bring them together, O oh Father, in a way that allows them to love and care for each other. We give you thanks even now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So you know what? Welcome to this wonderful mar marital journey. Um, viewers, that those newly wed couples, marriage can work. Mm -hmm. Marriage can work. And Reverend Kevin, um, in a few, this is August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in a few days. Of course, this is, this is the 15th. Today is the, to, to, today? Well, in terms of the program to Yes. To the 15th and yes. the 16th should, um, should mark my 46th and I'm Whoa. anniversary. Wow. So I, I thank God. I, I just had to say to those new new men. 46 years. 46 years. Well, we, we, we get a chance to, on, on national TV, commend you, Reverend Farley. Thank you. I mean, you're almost at 50. Yes. You know, uh, you've God's done, willing. you're batting very well. God's willing, God's willing. And, and looking well, you're seven, uh, and, and, and Sister Bev, looking yes. very, very well. God is good, God is yes. good. But as I just say that to say that to those newly wed, God can help you to mm -hmm. experience growth yes. and longevity. Yeah. And and the fact, I mean, we, we celebrate marriages um, in church on Sunday, mm -hmm. and I, I, I tell persons it is not about to waste time, mm -hmm. but we want to, 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 to show persons that and marriages can work. can work. That's right. That it can work. Yes, there yeah. are challenges, and mm -hmm. yes, there are some that uh, may not may not operate in the right way, and some that may not, um, you know, function and can become very caustic mm -hmm. um, to individuals. And, and there are things we have to kind of uh, go apart, mm -hmm. you know, but marriages can work. can work. And that is critical. Yes. Yes, with hard work, mm -hmm. intentional yeah. care. Mm -hmm. All right, Reverend Kalma, I pulled this one. It says, families, pray for families grappling with drug abuse and alcohol addiction. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a reality. A reality. And perhaps now with the pandemic, mm -hmm. there are persons sometimes who may even have lost their job mm -hmm. and uh, they stick back in the old habit, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and um, in that close environment, it makes I mean, life very, very difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. And, and it's one of the harder things to treat because yes. of <laughs> the whole mechanics of the, of the drug and how it attacks the, the different uh, brain centers, you know. Yes. Um, so, so yes, I mean, it's a, it's a major, a major uh, concern. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's not only a case where you have concerns for the person who is under the influence, but also the members of the family. Family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it becomes yeah. a great challenge. Because persons will, will sometimes, you know, steal to, um, to fulfill the habit, yes. you know, they'll take from other persons, they may even uh, friend, because because that, that, that need, that urge is a very powerful yes, one, yes. you know, when you understand how, how it impacts on the brain and mm -hmm. the dopamine mm -hmm. and, uh, and that kind of stuff, you know, yeah. and therefore sometimes persons will do the, the I mean, unthinkable, unthinkable yeah. unimaginable, especially within the kinds of family. Yes, to, to, to support the habit, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Father, we come to you at this time, and uh, indeed, this it's a problem that exists. And even as I pray out there, there may be families grappling with this issue of drug abuse, alcohol addiction, sometimes the combination, combination of both of them. And sometimes they suffer in silence. Um, it brings stress, sometimes shame. Sometimes it brings serious conflict and even sometimes result in physical abuse. 
But Lord, this is not too hard for you. We believe that you can intervene somehow and bring about transformation. We have known of people who have been under the, such influence of alcohol and drugs, but because of your intervention, their lives have turned around. There's no problem in the family that is impossible for you. And so, Lord, we bring this, we place this problem on the table today for those families over there who are struggling in this area. Perhaps there are some persons who know the difficulties that are being caused. They want to change, but change becomes so difficult. I pray you'll put persons in their lives who seek help because there's help out there that they can, that change can come about, positive change. And the members of the family, especially the children, can have a, have a better environment as they mature and grow. We thank you, Lord, for your intervention in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, um, so we have a rebel party. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, families have suffered financial loss. Yes. And that's a, that's a reality. A reality of our, of our time with the um, pandemic. You know, um, some family members have lost their jobs and it has impacted negatively yes. in the family finances or, or maybe maybe a death, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the person who is a chief breadwinner yes. you know, has died yes. and therefore the, the, the income to the family has been significantly reduced so, so financial cases. loss, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So let's pray for, for those yes. families. Father, this, uh, we give you thanks Lord today because you're the God who owns the cattle, as we say, on a thousand hill. In other words, Lord, we're saying that you possess the wealth of the world. And I pray, God, for those families that this time may be struggling financially. Pray, God, you'll grant to them the kind of help that they would need, whether through, Lord, the agency of your church, Lord, or through the social services. I pray, God, you will... You will meet their needs, O oh God. Father, your word tells us that you're the God who meets our needs, Lord, and the God who responds to our every situation. And so I pray, God, even now that you will come, Lord, that you would manifest your presence in a very real way, Lord, in their financial situation. Yes. But I pray, God, for wisdom as well. I pray that they would seek, Lord, to manage whatever resources they have uh, to the best of their ability. And I pray, God, for, for new ideas, Lord, to be deposited in their minds, Lord, where they can find uh, good and, and, and wholesome ways of earning money, Father. I pray that because of their financial challenge, Lord, that business ideas would emerge, oh, Father, and they will seek, Lord, to find uh, mechanisms, oh, God, to support themselves. Father, grant to them all that they need at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. We to thank you so much. Well, viewers, we are zeroing in on some areas. And um, this one zeroes in on forgiveness. In the, uh, the area of unforgiveness. Uh, of course, where forgiveness is needed, we're control issues of infidelity. Lord, again, we come to you. We know that forgiveness is, unforgiveness, I would say, is a, a big problem. Exists in families, exists sometimes in churches, in all institutions. And forgive, unforgiveness um, stems from a place of hurt. And in the context of the family, there may be infidelity, there may be trust that is undermine whatever the reason for forgiveness issues. We pray, God, that you would empower the parties to work through the issues. The person who has been offended and the offender to get to the point where they can realize their specific role um, in the problem at hand. Because, Lord, we know that forgiveness is gracious. It's based on grace. 
because we are a forgiven people mm -hmm. and because we are forgiven people we have to learn also to forgive but Lord you know that in order for us to forgive we have to draw on your divine resources so we're praying right now for those who are grappling with forgiveness um, and if it has to do with infidelity if it has to do with case with relationships with parent child relationship whatever the cause I pray God that you will make it a reality that the love can come back into the home the warmth can be returned into the home this is our prayer for Christ's sake Amen, Amen. Amen. Alright Okay, struggling teenagers mm -hmm. and um, before this has been a, a great concern whenever I've gotten a chance in recent time to speak to issues of family That's right. I've talked about the issue of teenagers because uh, that group has been impacted in a very in a very real way through the pandemic we have found that there are many teenagers have become you know depressed or anxious um, because of all these social restrictions that um, are part when it comes to school work school work yes yeah. so do I see at sea yeah it's been a, it's been a real real mm. challenge for yes. teenagers and yes. so I think this one is very very applicable you know at this at this juncture in our in our lives in our history yeah. so let's pray for for teenagers mm. Almighty God we we bless your name and we give you thanks we pray God for the teenagers that are you know, miss, Lord, and those who may be struggling uh, because of the pandemic, Lord, because of other issues in their lives. We understand, Lord, this is a time of transition, Lord, as they move into adulthood. And sometimes, oh God, it can be a very bumpy ride. But I pray, Father, for the stability of your Holy Spirit even now operating in their lives. I pray, Father, you'll grant um, to them uh, that sense of, of understanding and strength that only your Spirit can give. I pray, Father, for parents that are understanding, Lord. For the times of when we observe that they may not be going the way that we desire, but I pray, Father, we will be able to try our best, Lord, to be able to engage them, to talk with them, rather than see to commandeer them, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, today you'll grant uh, to, to, to us the kind of patience that we need as parents, Lord, uh, to work with us from the teenagers. And I pray, God, you'll provide for them confidence, Lord persons that will stand with them in their difficult moments, the persons yes. that they can confide in, Lord, uh, when they're having their own uh, uh, times of, of challenge, and, and, uh, challenge and, and difficulty, Lord. Send uh, responsible persons into their lives, Lord, uh, who will show them the right way to follow. Bless and help us from teenagers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Teenagers, we love you. We know you are important. Um, you are the, in essence, our future. Yeah. And we want to let you know, sometimes maybe we older ones don't always show that kind of appreciation that we should, but we do love you. Um, and we know that you are significant. And it's difficult sometimes to have a father because, <laughs> you know, with all that's happening around, the, mm -hmm. the job situation, the threat of drugs and violence, sometimes they do go through. Yeah. Um, a rough time. A rough time, yeah. yes. And yes. we have to show empathy. Yes. Because we too were, ourselves were young. Yes. Um, we, 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 we have to understand that they're going through a hard time. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, the time is rolling along. Um, but we can just have one more. Uh, we can, but perhaps we, what we can do, we can read them. And I have a final prayer. Okay. Yeah, let's, okay. let's read them all. <laughs> all right. Um, so we're going to put them together. Um, viewers, I hope you don't mind, but since we prepare them, let me read them and put them on the table. Uh, and even is the act of offering them to God. Um, mine says, pray for families with prodigal children, children who have drifted and, and maybe mm -hmm. sometimes don't even speak to their, their, um, their parents and so on. Who are, and the parents sometimes can't sleep at night, they're struggling and hurting. Mm -hmm. yeah. We pray for prodigal yeah. children. And this, this one has uh, to pray for families who have difficulties in resolving conflicts. And again, mm -hmm. uh, major issue sometimes, um, the conflict can spill over into violence. Yes. You know, sometimes it can become 
uh, issue that fractures the entire, yes. um, you know, family, you know, in terms of the extended family, mm-hmm. where persons can let themselves, yes. you know, behind different different individuals, mm-hmm. and that's not a good situation at yes. all. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, we we pray for these two issues, families with particular children. Lord, you know where they are, you know who they are, and we place this um, on the table today, asking the Lord to intervene and bring them back home, Lord, that they can be reconciled to their family members. And as we pray also for the persons, families that are involved in conflict, serious conflict, especially when children are involved, it becomes sometimes even generational. We pray that you would, Lord, intervene, intervene, and let peace reign. Somehow, let peace reign. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. If I want. We have one more, one yes. final one. <laughs> we have the time for it. Yes. And um, I, I think this will be we will have touched before. Mm-hmm. Um, families who are struggling with issues of unforgiveness. So we yes. touched on one before. Yes. yes. You know, um, mm-hmm. yes. that God would indeed mm-hmm. give us hearts of grace. Yes. Um, so we can release one another. You know, sometimes we, we, when we, when we, you know, something happens. 5, 10, 15 years, yeah. 3 months from the event, mm-hmm. where it's not as bad as we thought it was initially. Yes. You know, yeah. But then you hold all the stuff for, yes. for years and upright. And, and, and for, yeah, and upright. for a long, long, long time, you know, yeah. we hold all the stuff. So, so then we even feel it if, I, if we forgave, that we soft. mean soft. Let's soft. Yeah. You know, so we hold in. Mm. Pull and string, you know. Yeah, but you know, you know, I've, I've been told, and I've been told uh, that, and and it is a truth that the unforgiveness does more damage in whom it is stored yes. than in whom it is poured. It is true. You know, um, it is true. It does more damage to the person who, who holds the unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is about imprisonment. Yes. If I, if I imprison you, I got the keys. Yes. So I'm still, I still got the keys. So that's I'm, right. I'm really in prison with you. That's right. That's right. That's well, right. viewers, thank you so much for sh- sharing with us today. We, we just obeying God here as we place some of these issues on the table. So everyone, Kelma, give us a closing prayer as we kind of wind up mm-hmm. today. Almighty God, we are so delighted that we can come before you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity, this great privilege, Lord, that we can approach your throne and we can petition you, Lord, with reference to these family issues. I pray, God, today that as these challenges are multiplied across our nation, Lord, I pray for the multiplication of your power and your grace, Lord, to meet, Lord, each of these challenges uh, wherever they emerge. May your presence, O oh God, overshadow, and may your perfect will be done in our families. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in. We will see you next week. God bless you and work on your family. And remember, prayer is important. If you have not started on your prayer regime, you can start now. Mm-hmm. I hope we have nudged you in that direction. Mm-hmm. God bless you. God bless yeah. you.